Hello and welcome to Megor's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to perform a winding resistance quick test using the three phase winding resistance and turns ratio form number 56000 in PowerDB version 11.2.9. Let's get started. In order to conduct the winding resistance quick test, we will first launch PowerDB and open up the 56000 form that performs the three phase winding resistance and turns ratio. Once we open up that form and we fill out the header information and nameplate information, we will be ready to test. There are specific videos that discuss headers and the nameplate on this form in addition to the test settings. So I would recommend you watch those videos to learn more about those. So now we move on to the transformer test conditions section. So here you have information that needs to be input in regards to ambient temperature, humidity, weather, oil temperature, winding temperature, the reason you are testing and the status of the test. Now winding resistance measurement is dependent on temperature. So it's important that this information is recorded. Next you'll see a blue button that has a magnet sign on it and that is for the demagnetization process. The demagnetization window and the demagnetization process is discussed in a separate video. I would recommend that you watch that to learn more. Next we move on to the resistance measurement. So here uh, let's look at a few things before we begin the quick test. First is this is the measurement for resistance and this resistance has been selected to be corrected to 85 degrees C. You have the units for resistance. Those are configurable. You can have them in ohms, milliohms or microohms. So we are going to select milliohms. In addition to that, you have different line numbers. Here you see 40 through 44 and those correspond to each tap position for this transformer. Next, you have the H1 through H3 that would be A phase, H2 to H1 that would be B phase and so on. And for each tap and each reading, you have three values. The first biggest value that you can see is the resistance value. Then on the top left, you see a 10.07 value. That is the test current that was used. And below that, the values in green background, those are the stability reading for that resistance measurement. You have the same for each phase. And again, to the right side, you have the percentage between the phases for winding resistance and you can see that the maximum can be two percent now because we are using the simulation mode up here in power db these values are not real values or corresponding to a actual transformer so we have a higher than two percent winding difference but i wouldn't regard that very important next is we will look at these line numbers as you see 40 through 44 so in order to initiate a quick test, you would have to click on the line number. So if you click on 42, you will see a new dialog box that opens up. So in that dialog box, first you see at the top is the vector configuration of the transformer that you're testing. Next, you see the start button. And to the right side you have the exit button that will allow you to go back to the form and uh, below that you will see a status bar right now you can see that the word idle is showing up that means that the instrument that i have selected is in idle status it hasn't begun testing yet now in order to select the winding that you want to measure you can just click on the winding right here h1 and h3 selected you can select h2 h1 or h3 h2 so we are going to select the A phase that is H1, H3. In addition to that, you have uh, the nominal tap or tap number three that's selected. And you have the current here that's zero right now, but that'll be the test current that will be applied. Then to the right side of the table, you have the stability indicator. And then if you're testing on low tap changers, you will have the make before break sensitivity. The same applies even to the low voltage winding. Now let's look on the right side of this dialog box. So first is you will see the test current. 
So that will be the DC test current that will be applied to the transformer to make a measurement. So this current is configurable and you can select it based on the transformer you're testing. Now you have several options. 10 milliamps all the way up to uh, 10 amps. So we are going to select 10 amps in our case. Next you have the reading stability indicator. You have two options to choose from. The first is the last digit of the reading or you have a percentage stability. So we are going to select the percentage stability. Next is that value of percentage stability has been put out as 99.5%. Now this percentage stability can be changed. So if you click on it, you have different values. You can select from 99.5 and all the way up to 99.95. So we are going to let it be at 99.5. And after the stability percentage has been reached, you want the reading to not change for a particular period of time. So that period can be selected to be five seconds or six seconds or even four seconds based on what your requirement is. So I'm going to leave it at five seconds and then click on the green check mark box. So the reading will become stable if the reading is 99.5% stable and that happens for five seconds. Now I have the automatic data recording button so that can, if it's checked, once the resistances have been measured, they will be automatically transferred to this table. Or if it's not checked, then after a resistance stabilizes, you would have to click to record the resistance and then the testing can move on to the next phase. So I'm going to click it and keep the automatic data recording on. Below that, you have the make before break for tap changers, the sensitivity. So you can keep it at 5 milliseconds or that's configurable and you have several other time values that you can select. I'm going to leave that to, add, to be at 5 milliseconds. And then if you want this dialog box to close when the testing is complete, you can check this box. I'm not going to check this right now. So with all that discussed, I think we are ready to begin initiating a quick test. So let's click on the start button. You can see that the status now changed from idle to charging. You can see the test current has now gone up to 10 amps. You see the reading. And you can see that it's green because it's stable. Now it's going to wait for that time period. You can see that it's now saving results. It's next mix, it moves on to the next phase. You can see the same thing happening. You can see the reading stabilize. The testing has now completed. All the three phases have been tested with the appropriate reading stability. And once this screen is reached where you have measurements for all phases, then you can click on finish. Once you click on that, the values are now updated in the form. You can see that the line item 42 has updated values for resistance and they have the test current that was used and the stability for each reading. That's how you would conduct a winding resistance quick test. This concludes how to perform a winding resistance quick test using form 56000 in PowerDB version 11.2.9. Visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.